my name is Sarah. I'm an intern at the Ohio State University's OARDC working on the Integrated Organic Grafting Project. In this video we will be describing how we graft tomato plants. The grafting of vegetables is becoming popular around the world. Grafting allows a producer to combine the desirable properties of a vigorous disease-resistant root system from the root stock with the exceptional fruit quality from the scion. Rootstocks and scions may germinate and grow at different rates. Germination experiments may be necessary to synchronize the planting so the rootstock and scion plants will be about the same size and diameter at the time of grafting. Sanitation is important to success in the grafting process. There are several diseases caused by bacteria and viruses that may be carried on the seed and transmitted plant to plant during grafting. Examples of diseases that can be transferred during grafting are bacterial canker caused by Calabobacter and tobacco mosaic virus. Washing hands, the work area, and tools should be done frequently throughout a grafting session. Use of hand sanitizers or horticultural detergents is recommended. Changing to a new razor blade each time you begin grafting a new set of plants will also help reduce cross-contamination. The use of gloves may aid in sanitation, but can also restrict dexterity. When worn, gloves should be changed frequently. Seeds should also be treated to reduce the possibility of seed-borne diseases. For the cleft graft method, the root is decapitated and the root removed from the scion by cutting horizontally. The leaves of the scion are pruned, leaving only the meristem intact. This will reduce water loss from transpiration while the graft heals. The scion stem is then trimmed into a wedge. The rootstock is bisected vertically, and the wedge is then fit into the vertical cut. A clip is used to hold the graft joint together. Clips can be purchased or manufactured from plastic tubing. When forming the wedge on the scion, a grafter may want to use three cuts. The first two at about a 65 degree angle to form the wedge. And the third cut across the bottom. The third cut strengthens the wedge for the insertion into the vertical cut in the rootstock. A second technique for grafting, the tube graft or Japanese method, uses a single angled cut for both the rootstock and the scion. The angle of the cut should be approximately 30 degrees and the two are held together with a clip manufactured from tubing. It is important that the angle be the same for both the rootstock and the scion. The newly grafted plants must be placed under high humidity to heal. High humidity is maintained for the first week. The grafts are bottom watered through a capillary mat to reduce stress on the union site and limit chances of decay. To begin a gradual process of hardening off the plants, the shade cloth is removed after the first week and the plastic sides of the healing chamber are gradually rolled up. Following hardening off and regrowth of the plants, they are ready to be transplanted into a greenhouse, high tunnel, or the open field. <laughs>